Hello everyone, welcome to Democratizing Data with BigQuery and Data Mesh. I'm Stuart Moncada, Group Product Manager in Google Cloud's Data Analytics team. And I'm Vikas Kumar, Head of Data, AIML, Architecture at CNA Insurance. Today we're going to be learning about data transformations using Google's Data Cloud with a Data Mesh architecture. In the first part of the session, I'll provide a little bit of context on some of the challenges organizations are facing and how Google's Data Cloud can be used to address those challenges. And in the second part, Vikas will bring it to life with the real example of their data transformation and how they were able to democratize data. We're gonna cover things like transformation strategy and journey, before and after architecture, as well as cultural and organizational changes. Let's do it. Let's go. Now let's start with setting the context a little bit. We're in a phase of uncertainty where data and innovation are more important than ever. We're well into year three of the pandemic. We went from cheap capital and unstoppable growth to some of the headlines you see here. Supply chain challenges, inflation is sky high, markets are declining, and ultimately companies small and large are being impacted. Teams are being asked to do more with less. Now on the more positive side, the power of data, AI, and analytics, it's undeniable. It's the reason why we're all here today. And it's a great tool to continue to innovate while keeping costs under control. However, organizations really struggle to get value out of their data and AI. And actually very few organizations are able to show measurable financial benefits from their data. Now, let's talk about why that's the case. At Google, we're fortunate to work with a lot of organizations and we get to learn a lot from the, the customers that we work with. And really we're seeing three themes as to why organizations struggle to get value. Number one, data is big in multi-format. It's no longer just about structured text data. Increasingly it's images, audio, video. It's data from many different sources and systems. Number two, data goes beyond SQL. Organizations are looking to adopt new programming frameworks and new workloads like AI and ML, as well as streaming. And number three, data needs to reach everyone, needs to go beyond the data organization and impact the entire company, but also suppliers, partners, and ultimately your end users and your customers. Now let's talk about what are the characteristics of a modern data cloud that will allow you to get value from all of your data across all workloads and impact everyone this is all done in a way that's highly efficient, security focused, open and compliant. Now it really starts with being serverless. What does it mean to be truly serverless? It means you don't have to worry about hardware, but also you don't have to worry about clusters and VMs and administration and optimization. And you get to focus on adding business value. BigQuery serverless architecture takes advantage of Google's technical infrastructure that has been used for over a decade to power Google's biggest websites and applications. This is technology that has been tried and tested and is used in some of the biggest applications and websites in the entire world. Now serverless will get you up and running quickly. However, organizations are still looking for a platform that has support for data of all types and at all scales. And one theme that we're hearing recently from a lot of our customers is that they wanna get the best of both worlds and enjoy the benefits of a data warehouse and a data lake. That's why after years of investment, we launched Big Lake, our storage engine that unifies data warehouses and lakes and enables fine-grained access control across multi-clouds and open formats. This type of cross-cloud data analytics openness is one of Google Cloud's biggest differentiators and it aligns with our vision of openness and simplicity. Okay, so that was for limitless data. Let's now look at the workloads organizations want to enable and unify. A lot of vendors here may propose a lot of tools and processes for what we're about to discuss. Our goal is to focus on simplification. Historically, most data warehouses have supported batch processing, 
and some even allow for microbatch. However, in today's competitive environment, speed is a differentiator. With BigQuery's streaming API and additional services like PubSub, Dataflow, and Looker, organizations are able to get an end-to-end -end real time system with real time ingestion and real time analysis that unlocks new use cases like anomaly detection, recommendation engines, and overall continuous intelligence. Now, a conversation on data and analytics would not be complete without talking about AI. It's hard to come across an organization that's not either using it already or striving to use AI. However, organizations are in very different phases of their AI journey, and we want to meet them with the right tools at the right time. So for example, you could have a company that's looking to deploy the first model and looking to get started with machine learning. And with something like BQML, they're able to deploy an enterprise-ready production model in a few steps, all within the BigQuery interface, and have a model that's trained, predicting in a very short amount of steps. This type of built-in simplicity is so popular and so easy that it's been adopted by over 80% of our top customers. We also realize there could be an organization that's a little bit further in their AI journey or looking to do something very specific. That's why in those scenarios, we have tools like Vertex AI, where someone can deploy a more advanced model or bring in models from external notebooks. We've talked about data and workloads of all types, but ultimately we're doing all of this to drive efficiency, enable better decision making, and provide better user experiences. So to see how Google's data cloud can reach across an organization, we're gonna hand it over to Vikas and hear about their implementation of a data mesh architecture and how they were able to transform their organization. Thank you, Stuart. And thank you for joining our session. I'm really, really de delighted to be here. I've been working on data for quite some time now. And one thing is quite evident for me, the data is at core of every enterprise. Plus data, AI ML, and cloud adoption has been on the rise. We've been on this journey for a couple of years now, and I thought it will be good to share our learning from this journey, what we have accomplished, and where are we going. Focus of today's session will be how to decentralize data ecosystem by leveraging data mesh architecture. Let's talk about transformation journey itself. Most transformations are multifaceted. Let's contextualize this into a strategy. I've highlighted in a simple three strategy blocks. First and foremost, it requires we hire right talent, put them in right places. Second, we have to accelerate cloud adoptions and complement it with right set of tools and technologies. Governance and security model has to be part of ecosystem. Last but not least, the important aspect that everyone understand and work towards a common goal. And that common goal is how to enable business to make data-driven decisions. To be successful with cloud journey, we have to augment transformation with modernized work. We have to make sure we operate with product mindset, agile in nature. Going fully cloud native means we accelerate engineering practice, enable cloud architecture, develop code with CI CD, and DevOps is part of the culture. We must make sure that advanced analytics and AI ML capabilities are part of your decision making process. One of the hardest part of this journey and most organization and folks often struggle is, they don't know where to start and how to start. Having done this few times, I have wrapped up in a simple framework. Let's unfold this framework with five easy steps. Number one, you formulate a strategy with your cloud provider. In our case, it was Google. You work with them for a couple of months, come up with a strategic plan, did a kickoff. As part of this strategic plan, you have to define what success look like to prove the value and then make sure that you socialize this with, with your executives, tech and business both. Make sure you identify systems which will be part of this transformation journey. Once you establish that, 
you work towards building platform to execute that strategy. Number five, and perhaps the most important, you have to show the value, whether it's KPI, metrics, speed of the data, whatever it is. And degree and scale of this framework has and may vary for depending on the size of the organization, but please feel free to use it. Let's talk about what we are democratizing. We are democratizing platform, data, AIML on data, data mesh architecture. We need to build cloud foundation so that data can travel from left to right. I truly believe that data should be in the right hand side as soon as it's generated from left hand side. So as a data leaders, we have to make sure we enable tools and technologies to make that happen because speed is the name of the game and make sure you enable and wrap business context with these things. Perhaps you should also make sure, and that's an important aspect is, is that you make sure that you can handle variety of data sources from this. Furthermore, we are unifying into a common structure to reduce the complexity of the data. And we are creating many data product. One of the most important one, we are calling it common data model. To, and we are enabling business to participate with us with a simple framework of an spec model to implement data mesh architecture, which I'll show you in the third, next slide. The third component, which really give you uplift from this, a data AI ML. And to accelerate this further, we are further creating a data product. We are calling it model ready data set. Now let's talk about cloud data platform at high level. And I'm sure you, this slide will resonate with many of you. Let's focus on some specifics here. We are leveraging BigQuery as data lake. In past, I have used object structures and storage such as S3 and GCS as data lake. Over time, I have learned that eventually you end up moving this into data warehouses for data processing and consumption purpose. So why do that extra hop? Hence, we have eliminated that extra layer and we are using BigQuery as our data lake. We are using some of the advanced features from BigQuery such as structs and array without losing the hierarchical of the data and it's empowering our ecosystem for this unified data set. We are creating many data products which are highlighted in this slide. Now let's talk about the bottom piece. We are also enabling some of the basic capabilities in cloud which is essential like data metadata, data catalog, data quality, lineage, and security and monitoring, which is part of our ecosystem. Now let's talk about legacy architecture. And I'm sure this will resonate with many of you and you might have similar in your ecosystem currently. When we build this, we were build this based on data sources and we have created multiple data marts on top of that. Data of frequency is batch paradigm basis. Data comes as daily, weekly, even monthly for some use cases. And we really worked hard when we created this. And this led us to introduce the complexity because we have built data marts. Introduces complexity such as data silos and data duplications, data governance, all of that is really hard. And because in legacy world, today's standard wasn't a priority. And in the absence of all of this, even for simple data consumptions, we rely on subject matter expert to consume the data with us. And that's a real problem. Now let's fast forward and see how we are solving this, this next gen data mesh architecture. One of the things I've learned over time in the cloud is that you have to solve for the complex data structure problem, which get introduced by bringing many data sources into the cloud. Our focus should be how to make it easy to consume for data consumers. So they're not struggling to join the data, to build complex code to understand the data. We are transforming for them and presenting with a common model and unified data set and really empowering them to just consume the data. Because I truly believe that data really gets value out of it when it's easy to consume. And simplification is the differentiator and is a main component in democratization. And some of the today's capabilities which are essential are there, such as discovery, classification, governance, and security, and all that. And furthermore, we have the flexibility 
an ability to change the frequency of this on demand. Now let's talk about how common model are solving our cultural boundaries problem. Now you saw we are building unified data model. These data ecosystem are really solving our cultural boundaries problem as well. We are empowering business domain to create their own data product and they are self-sufficient to create their workload in their respective domains. In case we feel the data can be shared with other domains, they have the provision and that's how we are decentralizing all of the data ecosystem and leveraging data mesh architecture. Now you saw how we are solving the complex data structure problem with these unified data sets. These unified data set are further enhancing and becoming a backbone of our ecosystem and we are further creating another data product on top of that. It's called model ready data set. The purpose of this product is to reduce the model building timeline, easy to discover, and feature building for data scientists. So data scientist community can just focus on writing model code rather than spending time on discovering the data, doing the data prep, which I know and many of you will agree with me that their time goes, 50-60% time goes just there. So we are solving for that. And all of this will be integrated with Vertex AI, feature stores, and BigQuery Data Lake as well. Data sciences has, will have ability to consume this directly from our data lake, and they can build batch and real-time production on top of that. Now let's talk about business value, right? We are enabling data context with data content. We are also unifying complex data structure problem by these common models and data products. We are also solving time to market problem by bringing this data into real time into these unified data products. We are also establishing single source of truth for the data consumers. Now let's talk about where we are going next. We are going with AI ML prediction model. We are going to use more AI ML in our ecosystem. We're going to enable self-service platform capabilities with single click. We're going to continue to advance and empower business domains so they can create these workloads. And we're going to continue to integrate with third-party ecosystem with SaaS in cloud. I hope you learned how we have implemented data mesh architecture in Google Cloud. And thank you for joining our session today.